people get in with all very weird applications. There's no one specific right way to do this. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you today? Hi, um, I'm Megan. I'm uh, I'm actually a very, very non-traditional student. Okay. Um, what can I, I help you with? My, I'm sorry? What can I help you with? Uh, so I don't really have any advisors. Okay. I, I am in school full time and I did speak to a pre-med advisor, but... She kind of basically told me that if I wasn't prepared to spend like the next 10 years trying and failing to get into med school, then not to do it. (laughs) Um, So I haven't talked to her again. Um, (laughs) That's some motivation. Right. Yeah. So um, if you're not willing to walk on fire and cross the desert. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Anyway. So your videos have been my advising. Good. So. um, (laughs) My number one burning question is this. I am a stay-at-home mom. I have three very young children. Um, I do school full-time. Anything that's non-science, I do online. Science courses I'm doing um, in person, of course. Okay. Um, I volunteer for a hospital, and I volunteer on a crisis hotline. Okay. And um, I have a plan in place that in about a year, I want to start doing clinical and shadowing. Okay. I don't have time to research okay. at all. Is that an issue? I know that in your videos you said that it's over overrated. One of the most know, overrated parts of the application. It. Yeah, nothing yeah. is fine. Okay, that's that's. I've had uh, so many people, even like doctors who are my teachers, who tell me that I'm there and they're like, "You're doing great because um, I'm good in school," but they they tell me that, "Oh, you need to do something." I'm like, no, you don't need to do anything. Will it look better? Maybe. I, uh, like, th- you can't quantify it because every school's different with how they look at an application. And, and, yeah. ev- and admissions committee members are made up of human beings who have the ability to look at an application and go, okay, I see you have your grades. I see you have some clinical. Great. I see you're shadowing. Wonderful. I don't see any research. Why don't I see any research? Well, I, I see you're part of PTO. Oh, you must be a, a parent. Oh, maybe that's why you don't do research. Oh, well, okay. Then I'll, I'll ask that question when we interview you. Like, there, you're fine. Okay. You're fine. That- and residency applications research comes in a lot more. Okay. I was, I was hoping, because that's the one thing I was like, I feel like maybe that's the one I can do without. Cause you can do without. I know the other ones I cannot do without. Yeah, and, and even saying that, right, there's there's no absolutes in this. I've, I've talked to students who get into medical school with zero clinical experience, zero shadowing. And, and I'm like, okay, like <laughs> I wouldn't have accepted you because right. I don't know if you're going to like this when you get out in the real world and, and you're practicing. You're like, how do you know you want to be a doctor? Well, uh, whatever. Um, so people get in with all very weird applications. There's no one specific right way to do this. So I guess most of then what I also want to talk to you is kind of general advising stuff for me. Yeah. That, that's who you are, I guess. Yeah, that's who I am. Um, so I have mapped. Okay. And I have a very strong upward trend. Love it. Um, but it was, I mean, it went from way down okay. <laughs> to way up. Um, so I think with your like projection on mapped, mm-hmm. um, I think I can get my science GPA up to like a 3.4-ish okay. range. Um, and I am a pretty decent test taker. I'm doing well in my classes, so I'm hoping I'm doing well on the MCAT. Okay. Um, so so that, that together, final yeah. number doesn't bother me, what it, whatever that final number is. Mm-hmm. When you look at your dashboard, your mapped app dashboard, mm-hmm. and you see that green line, which is the semester line, mm-hmm. where's that green line, those last few dots? All at the top. All at the top. So 4.0. Okay. Yeah, I've got... Ish, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so so years. how I look at this is... Let me see that green line again. We're talking about mapped up for everyone watching and listening, um, which is free to to use and calculate your GPA, all that fun stuff. Um, you look at that green line. You 
w- how I look at this. I look at that green line, and uh, I first look at the GPA. I see, okay, 3.4, 3.3, 3.2, whatever it is. And I go, okay, what does the trend look like? What's the story behind that number? And, right. then, and then I would look at that green line and go, okay, I see it's gone up. It's stayed up, which is awesome. Then I go look at the credit bars. And I make sure, are you actually taking classes? Or is it one class that is accounting for that green line being at the top? So what kind of credits are you taking? Um, they're all right around 12 to 15. Okay, so full-time um, except student. For just this summer. Well, I, yeah. right now I've got like uh, four in there, and I'm taking another three okay. credits right now. And uh, how many semesters has that green line been near the top? <laughs> Nine, ten, eleven. Eleven semesters, yeah. roughly full time ish. Mm-hmm. Now that's split over. Like, there's a, a couple of years where I did a culinary degree. Okay. As part of it. Okay. And then there's the last um, two years. What is your science GPA at this point? Uh, two point four two. Okay. Um, and AMCAS and Acomas, it's. I've got my map open right now. Okay. Three point one one. Okay. So math really hurts you at some point for AMCAS. When I was um, young and I kept taking college algebra and not going to class. <laughs> so I felt it like three times. I'm actually really good at math. Yeah. Um, I was just struggling with a lot of things at that yeah. time. You're a different person now. Realizing like, hey, I should just not do this. Yeah. I just <laughs> Have you explored a late withdrawal? I've thought of that. Um, so I have one semester that's all F's. And that did come at a time with where a traumatic experience happened in my life. So I'm, I, that is on my like mental list of yeah. things to do. Yeah. Don't, don't hesitate. Reach out to a school and see if it's even something that they would entertain. Some schools okay. don't look at it. Some schools will be like on a case by case basis. We'll look at something. So okay. just let them know like, Hey, a long time ago I was young and dumb and, uh, didn't, no to withdrawal, didn't care, wasn't interested in anything. And so, uh, but now I'm applying to medical school and this is really hurting me. Um, mm-hmm. I know that some schools offer late withdrawals. Do you, do you have a process for that? So go down to class standing GPA. This is where I like to see. All right. So here's the perfect, perfect example of where numbers don't lie. So if you look at that 2.09 freshman year 65 credits now there's something wonky with your credits um that you would have 65 as a freshman so Um, i think that includes several w's and f's so the w's won't count the f's will count um so historically the way that that amcas works is uh if you can't really attribute where a class is, freshman, sophomore, junior, whatever, then zero to 30 is freshman, 30 to 60 is sophomore, 60 to 90 is junior, and then 90 plus is senior. So you may be right with how you have it. So just just think about that. So, but this is perfect, right? We can see a good distinction here of pre-good student. (laughs) You have 209, 65 credits, 392, 395, and 4.0 with uh, o- over 100 credits at this point. It's yep. at close to a, a three, uh, three, nine, four probably, right? right? And so that's awesome. Now go to class standing um, science GPA. And here is where you have a lot of work to do because your science GPA is only a 242, but it's only 30 credits at this point. Right. right. And so those 16 credits at a 0.75 are really dragging you down mm-hmm. and you just need more science credits. So right. do you have a lot more science credits to take? Do you know? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. So I'm I'm actually only like five or six classes away from completing my BS in psychology. Okay. Um, and since I decided to go pre-med, I have, I'm doing all the science Um I have to redo because I took some like not for science major science classes. Uh So I need to redo those. Um, But I I just did bio one. Okay. I'm doing chem one. Um, So I have a plan to do them out over the next two years. I'm wanting to take my MCAT next summer, apply the summer after that and 
after I've applied, still finish the last couple courses. Awesome. It, it will depend on how many, my, my recommendation may vary depending on how many classes you have left by the time you submit your application, especially for grade repair like you need. Is, right, yeah. is I typically don't recommend applying until that grade repair is done. I'm not okay. super concerned about you because your your grade repair has been great so far. Unfortunately, right. most of your credits are non-science classes. Right, yep. So we just need to make sure that as you transition into more hard sciences that those grades stay up. Maybe I'm naive, but I'm not too worried about it right now. Good. Bio is one. I hadn't ever taken bio since like, like high school, which was, you know, 15, 20 years ago, yeah. something like that. Um, and it was, it was a cinch. Yeah. That's awesome. And chemistry I have taken, it was not for science, but it, it just makes sense to me. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think like for the MCAT, I know I'm going to end up taking it before I have a lot of, um, before I take biochem or ochem. So I want to do the blue blueprint. I actually want to use Hunter cause I've watched your videos and I like the way <laughs> Hunter's awesome. He presents things. So I want to pay if I can find the funds, I want to use Hunter. Okay. Awesome. Um, Is there anything else in Maps app you want to show me? Yeah, actually, my activity here. Because I have a question about that. Okay. Okay. So this feels like a lot to me, and I don't want to feel like I want. I don't want it to feel like I'm like trying to overload things. But I, I am non-trad. I've got a lot of experiences. Mm -hmm. Um. So like these down here, like this, I definitely don't need to include this. I just put in here for now because that's kind of what I was doing for that time in my life. Mm -hmm. I would I would include that. Would include it. Okay. Yep. As one activity. Right. Now, could, do you think I could like just pull this one in? Sure. I had it separated here because it's I was a manager and it's leadership. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's important and it's more recent. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Uh, I think the leadership's good. Ultimately, there's there's no rules when it comes to what should you include, what shouldn't you include. But the 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 reason why I said that various retail restaurant work you should include because it's a, a nine year kind of span of time and so many right. hours. That's a big chunk of of time from your timeline that's going to be missing and be like, what's going on? Like, what, what, what are you right. doing? And so I think, right. I think it's important to put that on there. Okay. Um, so if I kind of, if I just merged these together and didn't count a show as leadership, do you, like I have some other leadership here mm -hmm. um, like this, I was, I was created this group at my culinary school and was president for a few semesters. Okay. And I I didn't put this as leadership. I could, when I volunteered at, or was on the board of directors at the community theater. Okay. Um, I just feel like I'm overloading it and I don't want it to feel like. I don't, I don't know what you mean by overloading. You have 15 spots. Use them. If I'm intending to like self teach or use blueprint classes mm -hmm. to teach, do you think like six months is enough time or? It should be. And okay. you got three little ones, you said? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Four, two, and one. yeah. So you yeah. you you have to play that. You you have to to kind of um, add that into the equation. Right. Yeah. So it could be for okay. a typical pre med without kids. Now for <laughs> you, you you may need to expand, or if you have good okay. support system, then then maybe not. Yeah, I do. I have an excellent support system. Uh, yeah, I was, I'm trying to decide whether I should take the diagnostic. Sorry, that mm -hmm. word just slid out of my head. I was trying to decide if I should take the diagnostic now. Um, if I'm trying, I want to take it in just, just over a year, end of next okay. summer. So I don't want to take it. I'm trying to figure out if I should take the diagnostic now and then look into starting possibly very soon with it. Or if I start now, am I likely to like forget? <laughs> you stuff? could. You no, could, but if you, if you're if you're aware of that, then then there are ways of preventing that. that. Yeah, so uh, I don't I don't think it hurts to take a diagnostic now. You get a, a free one at BlueprintMCAT.com. Um, so I, I don't I don't think you'd be hurting yourself by taking a diagnostic now. The only other thing really that I want to ask was so for clinical and um, shadowing, okay. I am lucky enough. I think I have a shadowing that I can kind of jump in 
when I'm ready. Uh, my OB is amazing and nice. she likes to teach. So, um, and when volunteering at the hospital, they do surgery days. I get to go spend a whole day in surgery. Awesome. Um, just watching surgery. So I'm excited for that. Um, but I was, my plan has been that in a year's time, my oldest will go to kindergarten. I can put the other two in daycare okay. and get, I'm want to do, um, medical assistant is my intent. Okay. Um, and hoping that at that time I'll make at least enough to cover daycare for the two. <laughs> Dep- right. Depends on where you are. Like, daycare. Right. I can't wait until I'm done paying daycare bills. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's it, <sighs> yeah. It makes things <laughs> difficult. Yeah. Um, but so that will put me at having being working and doing clinical and um, shadowing for right around nine months ish before I apply. It's awesome. Um, Okay, I just want to make sure. I just don't want that to look, look like oh, she's just kind of throwing that in at the end. Yeah, it's it's always a concern, right? Mm-hmm. And, and it's a valid concern, right. but the fact that you have a reason why you're not doing it, like right. completely. Most students who do that are like, oh, I don't know what clinical is. I don't know. Like they just they're they're clueless or they don't think it's important and they're focused on their studies. Like you got three kids, right. <laughs> your mama going to school. Like you're fine. You'll be okay. okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's, I am, um, you know, I, I've told a lot of people about your videos. Thank you. I think that's all I had. That's all you got? Well, good luck on your journey. I'm excited to see, uh, see your success. So applying 2024 to start 2025, is that the plan? Yes. And I am so sorry. I just remembered one, one more question. Yeah. If you don't mind. Um, I've heard you talk about um, how like certain ways to phrase um, things like rape. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I've, I've listened to that and I get what you said before about n- the particular words causing feelings inside people when they read them. Yep. Um, do you think that applies to, if I were to just use words like, um, regular abuse, um, culminating in a, like a final situation or abuse act? So, yeah. So, so my general advice is, don't don't think about it okay write it okay right what what you're trying to do and what everyone does no matter what situation you're trying to write about or just in general is mm-hmm. you try to edit all in your head and you just think about it and it, it right. doesn't work you just write it out see how it feels to write things out see how it feels to read things see just see if it tells the story share it with people who you trust um and and say how does this make you feel? What do you think about this? Is this too much? Is this too little? And and iterate and and adjust as you need. Okay, that makes sense. That's that's my advice, All right? It's it thinking logically and cerebral about that kind of stuff just doesn't work. You just got to get it out of you and just, just see the words. I do definitely try to edit everything <laughs> before I even yeah 